Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to try to walk you through how to make realistic motion with this jack lift. This is for Project Lead the Way, this is Introduction to Engineering Design and we're in Lesson 7.4 right now. Um, this is kind of going above and beyond, you know, this is just about assembling, but if we want to make this thing act realistically, we can do that with just a couple of simple steps and that's what I'm going to try to walk you through here. So let's start off with this. Um, right now you can see that if I expand the relationships folder, I can see all of the different constraints that have been added in in this process to get this thing locked into place. Okay. I'm going to start with this flush constraint that I added at the very end. Okay. Right now it's set at zero. So because of that constraint, I can't move anything at all. But what would I do if I wanted to actually simulate like pulling this object off, which would in turn turn the screw? Okay. What I can do is I can right click on the flush and I can choose, in fact, I'm going to rename it first uh, as, there we go, slow double click as drive me or something that's going to really remind me like this is where I'm going to go to cause the motion to happen. And now I can right click on it and I can choose drive. And when you click the play button, you can see, whoa, that's not what we wanted it to do. That's the wrong direction, isn't it? But it's going to go a, a distance of 10 inches. Okay, it's going to actually push like an offset plane. It's going to push that flush that we had 10 inches off into the distance. Well, I don't want it to go 10 inches. I want it to go the other way. So let's just go up here and type in a negative 10 and let's try it again. Okay, and so now I can see what's happening is, and ha, look at that. The screw is even changing elevation with it. Okay, what's happening is it's taking that offset and it's moving it 10 inches off. Okay, that's too far though. I don't want you to go 10 inches. Let's go like maybe three inches and see what happens. Okay, a little bit farther. Let's go five inches. So you just kind of monkey around with it until you get a number that you feel like is appropriate. Actually, I think five is too far because I don't want that screw to really come out. So let's just stick with three. That's good enough. I don't know why I'm bothering with this. Okay, um, you can see the screw is just about ready to come out. So there, now the whole thing stays intact the whole time. Okay, so now what we have is this drive constraint. That's pretty cool. We can click OK. And the things move together, but now we want to add something in addition to this to make the screw actually turn on its own. Okay, so that's an additional constraint. Um, I'm going to flip around to the other side real quick. That's called a motion constraint. So I click on the motion tab, and you can see there are a couple of different types here. We can have cylinder to cylinder rotation or I can have cylinder to straight edge. That's rotation translation. So that's the type that I want. And the cylindrical surface is going to be this axis. And I want it to rotate based on how this surface here is moving. Okay, I can't choose this one because um, that doesn't actually change. Like the object doesn't move left to right. It doesn't move this direction. Okay, so I need to choose a plane that's actually moving in relation to where my axis is. So I'm gonna choose this one here. I could have also chosen the front edge where that flush was, it would have been just fine. And I'm gonna click apply, or I can actually, I can close this down now. I'm gonna go back to that drive constraint and let's see what happened, okay? So I drive this, I click play. Whoa, that's happening really quickly, isn't it? Okay, so one of the things I don't like about this is the fact that that's moving so quickly. Let's go back in and let's make an adjustment here with this drive constraint real quick. Let's edit this. And there's actually an expandable menu here. And what's happening right now is it's driving. Oh, I'm editing the constraint. Hold on. I need to go right click and go to drive. I'm going to expand this menu here. What's happening here is it's really creating a series of still images, each of which is one inch apart. I'm going to change this so that it says total number of steps. And I'm going to say, you know what, make it like 100 steps to get from point one to point two. So now when I click play, look how slowly that goes. Okay. Now, this is pretty good, except now the screw is going the wrong direction. When I turn to the right, when I go counterclockwise, it should tighten things up, not loosen them, right? So I'm getting a little bit closer. I'm going to click OK here and save that so it moves slower. Now I need to go back into my rotation translation. I'm going to click Edit. And I can change the direction by just clicking on these. So I can say, you know what, I want to go in reverse. And that'll make it go clockwise instead of counterclockwise. Click OK. Back to the drive constraint. Let's drive it. Let's test it out. Aha, now we have, whenever we tighten things up, hey, that's pretty good, right? So now you have a working jack lift that actually has the constraints and the screws moving like they're supposed to. 